arriving in Abuja, you're immediately thrown into this vast multitude of people, very heavy traffic on the road. And then you have to travel down. It takes something like 12 hours on the road. But on that journey, you're struck by how populated Nigeria has become. New villages, people going about daily activities. And then when you get into the park itself, you're in another world. And you're in this extremely tranquil, peaceful world. You wouldn't believe that Nigeria had a quiet corner like this. As soon as I arrived there, I, I, it struck me that I'd, I'd arrived in, in a real wilderness. Full of woodland, forest, rivers, uh, an ecosystem that has changed very little for thousands of years. It, it is really a, a superb, untouched wilderness. Increasingly difficult to find in this um, busy world of ours. I've been in, in other conservation areas all over Africa and I've, I've never found the same diversity of ecosystems as I found in Kashaka. See, you had uh, Guinea Savannah woodland, which is an open sort of orchard woodland. You had forest going in the higher altitudes, going up into montane forest. The highest mountain in Nigeria is there within the park. Chapel Wadi, which goes up over, over 7,000 feet. But then the animals, you've got the heart of beast, cob, bushbuck, giant forest hog, red flank diker, golden cat, leopard. In the forests, a fantastic array of primates and chimpanzees. So in terms of Nigeria's national heritage, I think it's it's the most important area that Nigerians can can go in there and see an area of land that, that would have resembled something that, that, that their forefathers might have known thousands of years before.